In the previous video, we looked at how this refund function could break if the gas required to call it is greater than the block gas limit. Well, here's one way we could get around it. First, I'm going to make a new variable called refund index. And then I'm going to set the starting value of index. Instead of equal to zero, I'll set it to the cached refund index. Then at the end of the loop, I will have the refund index equal the index. Now we just need to know when we should break out of this loop. So when you call a contract in Ethereum, you specify the amount of gas, the maximum amount of gas that you want to whitelist for that function execution. Now, as the function is executing, it will slowly start to use more and more and more and more of that gas. If you want to gain access to the current amount of gas remaining in your contract call, you can get it at any time by calling the message.gas symbol. So we can check in this loop that the message.gas remaining is greater than, let's say, 100,000, which is some small amount of gas. That way, when the gas starts running low, it will cache the current index of the refund and save it to this variable. So let's see what this might look like. I'm going to open my decipher console and I'm going to set the var deployed equal to decipher.create contract. And in addition to passing in the contract source as the first parameter, I can also just pass in a path to the contract. So this in this case it's dot slash crowdfund.sol. And then I'll pass in the constructor parameters of account one, web three dot two way 10 ether as the funding goal and 10,000 seconds as the duration of the contract. And I'll also pass in 1 million gas for the contract to deploy. And now that the contract is deployed, we can do some spam transactions. So I will do four I equals zero. I is less than 300. I plus plus deploy dot contribute and we'll make this from account five again and the value will be one way and let's let this run and I can look at the deploy dot refund index dot call dot to number and see that it's zero so now if I try to refund the contract deploy dot refund then we'll make this from account one and we'll pass in one million gas We'll see that the contract does return. We can look at the gas usage down here. So let's do web 3.2 decimal. And we'll see that the contract used 925,000 gas. So as it got low, it cached the refund index and exited. And we should be able to look at that now if we do refundindex.call.2 number. And we'll see that it did cache it at 119. So now if we called refund again, it should start at 119 and then start refunding the other accounts. Um, now it's at 238. And if we call it again, even though we're only passing in a million gas, we'll see that we did manage to refund all 300 transactions and get and avoid that issue with the block gas limit. An even better way to improve this contract is to change the data structure that we're using for the funders. So we're going to blow away this entire struct and the refund index. And instead of using an array for the funders, we are going to use a mapping. Now, a mapping is the solidity construct for a key value store similar to the way you'd have a hash map in most programming languages or an object in JavaScript. And because it's a statically typed language, you need to define the type of the key and the type of the value. So in this case, we can have an address as the key and then a uint256 representing the value of the contribution. And we will call this instead funders. Now our contribute function is going to change where instead of pushing the funder onto an array, we will just set the funders message dot sender plus equal to the message dot value. And this is also nice because it lets us aggregate different contributions from the same person into one data structure. The refund function is also going to change and it's going to change the way that we're calling it. Instead of having the beneficiary call the refund function and loop through a bunch of objects and send the refunds, we will actually have the individual user call for their own refund. And we can have something like this where message.sender.send funders message.sender. And then we could set the funders message.sender equal to zero so they can't call it multiple times. But in this workflow, instead of us pushing the refund to the user, the user will pull for their own refund. And that's often a better way to get around gas limitations and solidity contracts. Now, because we would have a user calling this refund function, we need to put additional guards on it and say you can't call it unless the current timestamp is over the deadline and this dot balance is less than the goal, for example, so they're not refunding out of turn. But something like this is actually probably a better workflow. 
one of the limitations of using mappings in Solidity is that there's no native way to loop over the mapping and get all of the values out of it. But that's often something that you want to do in your user interface. In fact, you can think of a Solidity mapping as having the entire address space already initialized. So every possible valid Ethereum address is initialized with the value of zero. And there's no concept of let me get all the addresses in that mapping in my user interface. So if I did want to have a list of all contributions in a user interface, I'm going to need to add some helper functions. So first, I'm going to make an array of addresses called funder addresses. And then in the contribute function, I'll need to check if funders message.sender is equal to zero, meaning this is the first time that somebody is contributing. And if it is, then I can funder addresses.push the message.sender. Next, I'm going to need a function to be able to get the current count of the funder addresses. So I'll make a function called funder address length. And this will constant returns uint. And we will return funder addresses dot length. I'm also going to need a function that can get an address out of that funder addresses array by index. So we'll call this fun we'll call this get funder address. And this will take a uint of index and constant returns address. And we'll return funder addresses and then the index there. And finally, I'm going to need a helper function called get funder contribution, which is going to take an address. And this will return the uint of the contribution from that address. And we will return from funders the address. If we want to deploy the contract, we can use the same script that we've been using before. And let's make a couple contributions. So let's do deploy.contribute. And we'll make this from, and we'll make the value rather um, web3.2way one ether. And we'll make it from account two. We'll do a contribution from account three and then a contribution from account four. And if we called deploy.funder address length, we'll see that we do get three. So we know that there are three total addresses that have contributed. We can get the addresses of them by looping through the you know, numbers in this index and doing deploy dot get funder address. And let's say like at index zero, and we'll see that we do get this address. And then we could take that address and do deploy dot get funder contribution and pass that guy in and we'll see the contribution of that address. So based on these three helper functions of getting the contribution, the address, and the length of the array that we're storing here, we actually could construct a UI where client side, we loop through the number, the length of the array, getting the address and the value at each index. And that's how you could extract maybe the entire mapping into your user interface.